Um, so yeah, we've got um, Tony, who's come down from uh, from Sydney. He's one of the few that have made it through Sydney Airport um, this morning. So yeah, GME um, obviously one of the probably the most well-known two-way radio brand in Australia, and probably good, for good reason. I went I went up a couple of years ago and had a look at their manufacturing facilities, and yeah, it's a very elaborate, enormous setup that they've got in Sydney. Um, so. It's really good to see stuff getting made in Australia. I'm not just talking about the radios, but you know, even the antennas, all, all the all the parts have got injection moulding, the whole lot. So it's really impressive to see that. Um, GME also is one of probably a handful of companies that's older than radio parts. Um, you know, we're just uh, 80 something years old, but I think you guys are how many? Um, well, 60 years in Australia. So yeah. when we first started, it was TV components 60 years ago. All right, um, so just young guys. Yeah, we're, we're babies. 1920 rings a bell for some reason. We're, Not sure. That, that might have been when Ted was uh, was born, the yeah, founder of the company. Yeah. All right, yeah. So, all but right. yeah, pretty old. Um, 60 odd years in business, and we've been building UHFs in Australia for over 30. So far and away the oldest Australian manufacturer of, of radios. I've been doing my research beforehand, don't I? <laughs> um, so yeah, and a fantastic brand. Um, obviously, you know, as far as warranty and support um, and, and knowledge levels, these guys are, are right up there. So I'll uh, hand you across to Tony. Thanks a lot, mate. Um, so yeah guys, uh, my name's Tony Crook, I'm the Senior Product Manager at GME, so I look after the UHF category and also the, uh, the Marine category. So as Mike said, one of the, um, well, pretty much the market leader in UHF in Australia, uh, the only Australian manufacturer. We've got a team of about 45 engineers, um, all the radios, whether they're built here or overseas, are all designed and, uh, and engineered in our facility in Winston Hills. So I'll kick it off. Um, today I'm here to talk to you about some new technology that we've released to the market, uh, being XRS Location Services. So hopefully you all know what I'm talking about there. So again, hopefully everyone knows what one of these is. UHF is a pretty unique technology uh, to Australia. There are two-way radios all over the world, but in the majority of countries, the frequency that we run UHF on is reserved for either military or government use. UHF kicked off in Australia in the early 80s. Um, it was driven pretty much solely by the farming industry. Um, farmers obviously need two-way communication. Uh, this is well before the era of mobile phones and the distances that we deal with in Australia basically mean that there is no other option for, uh, for the vast majority of people that live off the coast. It's a pretty mature market. Um, as I said, early 80s was when it kicked off properly. Um, and there's been very little in the way of innovation. Uh, it's a case of pushing the button, talking and receiving those transmissions. Unfortunately, in mature markets, as you would probably all know, there's, there's very little in the way of innovation. As the market leader in UHF, GME's made a commitment to, I guess, the market and to consumers that we are going to lead that innovation. We're going to continue to drive new technology in this space. The reason, as I said, that UHF is so unique to Australia is because of the landmass that we deal with. So everyone that lives in a major city gets very frustrated with a lack of mobile phone reception. You can go behind a building and lose reception. For people that live off the eastern seaboard, this is a day-to-day -day thing that they have to deal with. Only 14% of our landmass is covered by cellular coverage. So even with the huge investment in infrastructure from the likes of Telstra, it's still only 14%. So to put that in perspective, it's about a million square kilometres out of 7 million that has mobile phone reception. 16 months ago, September 2016, GME launched something that was completely new for the UHF market called the XRS Connect platform. As I said, UHF radios, you press the button, you talk to people, they hear you. However, when we launched XRS Connect, there was a very large development uh, period before we released these to market and we really wanted to revolutionise what it was that we offered to consumers. One of the main things about XRS that's completely different to uh, all the other UHFs on the market is the microphone. So the most visible part of the radio. The radios that we have in XRS Connect are all hideaway style radios, so the box doesn't need to be seen, it's basically a black box. This microphone, however, has a number of features that nobody else is, is matching us with in terms of UHF. So it starts with Bluetooth technology, enabling pairing to smart devices, phones, tablets. 
Unfortunately, doesn't give you the ability to answer mobile phone calls through your radio, which is something we get asked all the time. The communications authority won't let us do it. It's possible, but we won't get it approved for sale. It blurs the line between mobile phone technology and UHF. So as much as customers keep asking, we can't deliver it for them. There is a dedicated smartphone app that we released called the XRS Connect app. And as I said, that's enabled through Bluetooth technology. No one else in the market's offering Bluetooth in a UHF radio. And because of the limitations of what we can do with UHF in terms of the class license and the standard in Australia, the way for us to provide that next level of innovation was by Bluetooth technology and smartphone apps. Another part of the reason that we've gone down the path of smartphone apps is the type of customers and the demographic of UHF users. So we've done a considerable amount of market research and the strongest demographic for UHF is still at 45 plus age bracket and it's 98% male. As part of future proofing our company and ensuring that we've got a, a future selling UHF radios, we really need to appeal to the younger generation. As I'm sure a lot of you know, the younger generation are invariably glued to smartphones. So being able to offer that bridge, it's a way of us trying to appeal to a different demographic and really trying to spread the market for UHF. One of the other key benefits of having that smart technology in the radio is that we can enable free firmware upgrades. So previously, if you had a UHF radio that was launched to market and it had a bug in it, which of course the GME radios would never have, but assuming they did, a customer needs to remove the radio from their vehicle, send it back to the manufacturer, it needs to be plugged into a computer and reflashed. Now, it's as simple as pushing a notification through the smartphone app, and the customer can write their own firmware. That also enables us to continue to upgrade the radios. So part of the, I guess, the value proposition, and we're talking about expensive radios here, these are premium price products. You can buy a radio for $200, or you can buy a radio like this that enables future technology to be delivered to the customer. So they buy it once, but there's a, a commitment from GME that we're gonna continue to evolve the radios and to continue to, to offer new technology. The microphone's also got an OLED screen. I'm sure you guys all know what that is. It's been very well marketed by the large television manufacturers, so that's made our job a little bit easier. What it means in the real world, though, is that you can see it really easily. So in high glare environments, when sunlight's on it, if you've got the radio mounted somewhere with an acute viewing angle, it means you can actually see the screen and you can read what's going on there. It's super bright. It's much brighter than any other LCD screen available on the market. So OLED technology is something that we're going to continue to evolve and to continue to imp include in our UHF radios. The user benefit is something that a customer can easily and very quickly identify. You can show them how good this is once the radio is plugged in. It's also got a two watt speaker in the front of the microphone. It's loud as. So most of the UHFs on the, radio, on the, uh, on the market have got a half watt uh, speaker in them and it's usually in the back of the handpiece. So it's not that loud. In particular, as I mentioned, farming environments, if you're in a tractor or a combine, they're really loud. A lot of four-wheel drives are very loud, so being able to have that extra volume out of the handpiece is a really good user benefit, something that makes the whole experience a lot nicer for the customers. And then the last part is customizable buttons. So again, not something that's hugely revolutionary in terms of technology, but for UHF it enables the customer to really customise that product and make sure that it gives them exactly the experience that they want when they're using it. So, as I said, September 2016 we launched two models. So we launched the 330C and the 370C. Same microphone, the box is slightly different, the 370's got a uh, speaker built into the box, so again even more volume for those super loud environments. And they've been really well received. Uh, it was a bit of an experiment for GME. Um, in a mature market like that, when you're coming in with new technology that hasn't been done before, it's, uh, it's a challenge for people that work in marketing like myself. But it's been really, really well received. We've had a core group of customers and some of those older demographic that were a bit unsure whether they'd accept the technology or not have really bought into it. Over the last couple of months, we've launched another two versions of, uh, of these radios. So we've got the portable pack. We get a lot of feedback from customers, particularly with new vehicles, expensive vehicles like Sahara Land Cruisers and NP300 Navaras. They're all molded dashes. There's nowhere to put a radio. 
particularly one that's got a screen built into the box. So this is where the black box radios are so popular, particularly with the four wheel drive market. So we launched the portable pack as a way of giving those casual users the benefit of all the XRS technology, but not having to drill holes in the car and have a permanent, permanently mounted radio. You can still plug a larger antenna in if need be, and a lot of customers that we've heard feedback from at shows have bought into the portable pack, or what a lot of people would know as a plug and play, and very quickly realised that the small antenna provided with that doesn't give them the performance that they, they desire, and they end up adding an antenna on. So it's good for you guys if you're pushing that sort of product as a, to a casual user, that you've got that chance for the customer to come back and you can add the antenna on afterwards. And then lastly, we've got the spotter pack. So this is a promotional pack we did for Christmas, very clearly targeted at the four-wheel drive market. It's been really good for us uh, with shows, and it's also been really good for us to try and encourage that, that upsell in the four-wheel drive market. Um, it is only a promotional pack, it's going for a short time, but the proposition from GME with XRS is that this is going to continue to expand. So at the moment we have the three core models, left to right. Over the next couple of years we've got a really solid roadmap on XRS of where we're going to take the technology. There'll be value packs, there'll be handheld radios. We're going to continue to expand that range into DIN mount to appeal to all the different market subsegments that we deal with. So to take a change of tact here, sorry for that extremely dodgy low resolution image. But this is something that everyone's really familiar with. This has been a huge change in the technology market over the last 10 years. <coughs> Mapping via smart devices is something that even in my lifetime, I remember having a UBD street directory in my car to get around. If you speak to anyone under the age of about 21 now, they probably would look at you with a very strange and bewildered look because they don't even know what those things are. This has made everyone's lives a hell of a lot easier for getting around. Great for finding places and people. Obviously, no paper required. You don't have to have an encyclopedia-sized book in your car. But you need cellular reception. Think back to the start of the presentation. In Australia, 14% of the country is covered by cellular networks. So it's great to have mapping and it's great to be able to navigate with your smartphone and find places and people and locate things, but as soon as you come out of a, a CBD area and you lose cell reception, you're basically presented with a grey screen. So, GME identified a really big opportunity. Our core customer base, where we're strongest, is in rural areas for reasons I explained earlier. So we developed XRS Connect Location Services. This technology already exists in professional radios. The likes of Motorola and Smoko have P25 location services. It's data over voice. The difference between those radios and what we're doing is obviously the professional radios are targeted at government, fire service, forestry, those kind of guys who might use UHF, but for an everyday customer, they don't want a professional radio. They they don't want to pay for a professional radio, they don't want to license it, etc. So the challenge for us was to take this technology and put it into a UHF radio and deliver those same benefits that the professional radio guys have got, but also present it in a way that customers are familiar with. Previous slide, mobile phone technology. So that's the background of, I guess, why we've done what we've done. Now how it looks, is very similar to what customers have come to expect from the likes of Google Maps. I have to note that we don't use Google Maps for this technology for one very simple reason. Google is an internet company and they want everything to be online at all times. If there's no cellular coverage, there's no maps. So that pretty much instantly cancelled out the, uh, the option of using Google Maps. However, what we are using is a technology called OpenStreetMaps. It's open source mapping, stored on servers in the United States, covers the entire globe. And the beauty of it for us is that we can provide offline mapping solutions to customers. So as I said, location services is data over voice. From a technical perspective, when you send a voice transmission, there is capability for us to send a small data packet at the end of that transmission, which we can use to send GPS coordinates. We've also got 32 characters of freeform text, which we can use as a status field. So, the XRS Connect Location Services app 
pairs to the XRS radios via Bluetooth. The GPS engine in the smart device provides the location data, irrespective of cellular coverage. So anywhere in the world you get contact with three satellites, you can triangulate your GPS position. That's then sent via Bluetooth to the radio, and every time you transmit from an XRS radio connected to a location services app, it sends your location with that voice transmission. Why would anyone want this? UHF is a very anonymous technology in terms of communication. For some people, like truck drivers, they appreciate that because the police can't tell who's letting the cat out of the bag or where they're doing speed traps or RBTs. But for people like four-wheel drive users, people in rural communities, it can sometimes be a bit of a challenge. You can talk to people, but you don't know who you're talking to or where they are. This is the use case that we've designed this app for. As I said, the ability to cache offline maps is the key benefit that we offer with this technology. So before you go out of cellular uh, reception, you can go anywhere in the world, select a map area, download that to your smart device. It is stored in the app. There is no limit to how many maps that you can download. There is a size limit per download, purely so that we don't cripple people's devices. And there is a warning that comes up in the app that says, you're about to download a really large amount of data. Are you sure you want to do this? It might cost you money. However, you can cache four levels of map up to about 300 meg per download. So if a customer so desired, they could download the whole of Australia to their device, but they would run out of storage very quickly. They are highly detailed maps. You can also create points of interest. It's very simple, it's like Google Maps. You press and hold the screen, creates a POI. It drops a black pin on the map. You can then open that POI. It'll give you the GPS coordinates. You can plug that into your navigator and navigate back to that point. And we are in the process of developing a sharing function for those POIs. That'll be via social media and email. That'll come out in the second generation of the app, which is due for release in about one month's time. And lastly, you can create contacts and groups. So as a product manager for these particular products, my perfect world means everyone that's got a UHF has an XRS. If you go to a popular four-wheel drive area in the next one to two years and everyone's connected to location services, I'm happy. But you might not be happy because your entire map screen will be very quickly filling up with pins. So the ability to create contacts and groups means you can filter those users out and only see the location data for the people that you're interested in. It's probably a good time to note that this will work only between GME XRS units. So it's a question that we get all the time from existing customers with unit end radios. Hey, can I see this, this data on my screen? Unfortunately not. That's kind of the point. In UHF, one of the biggest challenges we face as a manufacturer is these products last too long. So the replacement cycle for UHF is around 10 to 15 years. A lot of the time, the only time anyone will replace a UHF is when they replace their vehicle. So the radio goes with the vehicle, they get a new vehicle, they need a new radio. At shows, we constantly have people coming up to us saying, can I get a microphone for X UHF? And invariably my response is that radio is older than me. We're trying to encourage customers to replace their radios more frequently by offering technology that nobody else can and that cannot be backwards compatible with other radios. So that'll help you guys and it'll help us to sell more radios. In terms of how the technology works for the user, so apologies, I should have uh, updated this to Melbourne for you guys, but this is quite a zoomed out view of what you'd see on the, uh, on the screen. As I said, there's four layers of detail. You can go right down to street level detail. It's got all the street names and everything else in there. In rural areas, it's got, um, sorry, not rural, in four wheel drive areas, you can get right down to fire trails and pretty much every track. I actually do a lot of four wheel driving myself and I'm yet to enter a track that isn't shown on these maps. So you can be confident that the detail that's provided in these maps is, is really quite special. We had a customer come to us 24 hours after we released this app on the 2nd of February. And he said that he'd been out four wheel driving. He was part of our pre-release um, community who'd, who'd signed up for a, a pre-release. His navigation unit stopped working, but thankfully he'd cached offline maps for the area he was in. He managed to navigate back to a main road using these maps instead of his navigator. 
Whilst that isn't the, the intended use case for this, it's a good backup for people who are in areas where there is no coverage, and it's something that you can be confident in the detail of the level of maps that we're providing. So, you connect your radio to your phone, and your location is updated approximately every two minutes via the satellites, and it's displayed by a small blue pin on the screen. When you transmit, it'll show you a red pin. So whether you receive or send a transmission, red pin is displayed on the map. You can turn that off if you don't want to see your own location, but it is quite useful for dropping a breadcrumb trail if you want to know where you've come from and how to get back there. It's user selectable how many pins are displayed, the age of the pins, how long they stay on the map for, and they change colour as they age. So they start off bright red and they go gradually through to grey. The main I guess uh, intention for us though is that the customer can decide what's showed on, shown on the screen at any time. We don't want to force customers to have heaps of information that's not relevant to them. So the point is through the settings menu the customers can select what they see and when and how long for. If you receive a transmission from another XRS user, it'll come up with a red pin but it'll also come up with a small information box. That includes the user ID, which is user selectable. You can call yourself whatever you want. And it's also, as I said, very useful for determining who you're talking to at any one time. You've then got a small hashtag field there, which is the 32 character freeform text field I referred to earlier. We cannot use the term messaging. The communications authority gets very upset when you start sending text messages over voice because it blurs the line between a mobile phone and a UHF device. So this is a status, not a text message. However, with 32 characters, you have the ability to send a message. The beauty of this for many of our customers, particularly farmers in rural areas, if someone's in a tractor and gets out to check on a fence or turn on a pump, and someone transmits a really important piece of information they're away from the vehicle, as you know, they wouldn't hear it. If there's no verbal confirmation back from the user, you can then input that status field, hit the PTT button, and it will send that text field to the, custom, to the, uh, the user on the other end, and when they get back to the vehicle, they can see what it is. We've pre-canned a number of statuses into the app already, things like driving, stopped, heading home, but they're all user selectable, they can delete them, create whatever they like. So it's something again that gives another level of functionality to UHF that customers really haven't been able to do previously. Assuming that user then drives a little bit further along and transmits again, it'll display another pin, the text box will move with the, to the most recent transmission. Hopefully everyone here is fairly familiar with UHF technology and particularly GME radios because you want to sell them more than any other brand. And something we've been promoting for quite some time now is cell call technology. So with location services, when you connect the app to the phone, uh, to the radio, sorry, if you have cell call set up, you press the button and it plays a cell call tone. The radio on the receiving end will send an acknowledgement tone that it's identified that cell call ID. The beauty of that is, with XRS Location Services, that response also includes GPS coordinates. So there's a safety element for it. Say you're on a farm, you put someone in a ute to go out and turn a pump on, and half an hour later they're not back. You can try calling them on the radio, and if they've fallen over and broken their leg and they can't get back to the vehicle, you're not going to have a clue where they are. With cell call turned on, you can ping the radio and you'll get that location data of the other radio. Again, this is a very fine line in terms of what's, available, what, what's allowable within the standard. UHF requires user intervention to press the PTT. With cell call, we can tread along the line of what's possible and allow that safety aspect to really become available to people who've traditionally had to go to a professional radio solution to, to give this kind of functionality. Just to digress slightly, the reason that GME's been able to develop this technology for UHF CB is actually through our P25 development. So P25 professional radio, we've spent a considerable amount of money on R&D and engineering over the last five years to develop P25 for government use. P25 Location Services has come along with that. 
I've been very lucky as the UHF product manager to be able to pluck that small piece of technology and plug it into the XRS radios via the Bluetooth. So it's something that we're quite confident that our UHF competitors are not going to be able to bring to market, not going to be able to match us anytime soon unless they spend, again, considerable development money to develop P25 technology. So for us, it's about differentiating from the rest of the market, making these things not just a standard UHF radio. And again, it's about appealing to those customers who maybe would be focused on price, but will now see the extra advantages of XRS, hand over the extra money, and also have confidence that they're going to continue to receive upgrades and new software for the 10 or 15 years that they're likely to own the radio. It is stored in the app. There is no limit to how many maps that you can download. There is a size limit per download, purely so that we don't cripple people's devices. And there is a warning that comes up in the app that says, you're about to download a really large amount of data. Are you sure you want to do this? It might cost you money. However, you can cache four levels of map up to about 300 meg per download. So if a customer so desired, they could download the whole of Australia to their device, but they would run out of storage very quickly. They are highly detailed maps. You can also create points of interest. It's very simple. It's like Google Maps. You press and hold the screen, creates a POI. It drops a black pin on the map. You can then open that POI. It'll give you the GPS coordinates. You can plug that into your navigator and navigate back to that point. And we are in the process of developing a sharing function for those POIs. That'll be via social media and email. That'll come out in the second generation of the app, which is due for release in about one month's time. And lastly, you can create contacts and groups. So as a product manager for these particular products, my perfect world means everyone that's got a UHF has an XRS. If you go to a popular four-wheel drive area in the next one to two years and everyone's connected to location services, I'm happy. But you might not be happy because your entire map screen will be very quickly filling up with pins. So the ability to create contacts and groups means you can filter those users out and only see the location data for the people that you're interested in. It's probably a good time to note that this will work only between GME XRS units. So it's a question that we get all the time from existing customers with unit end radios. Hey, can I see this, this data on my screen? Unfortunately not. That's kind of the point. In UHF, one of the biggest challenges we face as a manufacturer is these products last too long. So the replacement cycle for UHF is around 10 to 15 years. A lot of the time, the only time anyone will replace a UHF is when they replace their vehicle. So the radio goes with the vehicle, they get a new vehicle, they need a new radio. At shows, we constantly have people coming up to us saying, can I get a microphone for X UHF? And invariably my response is that radio is older than me. We're trying to encourage customers to replace their radios more frequently by offering technology that nobody else can and that cannot be backwards compatible with other radios. So that'll help you guys and it'll help us to sell more radios. In terms of how the technology works for the user, so apologies, I should have uh, updated this to Melbourne for you guys, but this is quite a zoomed out view of what you'd see on the, uh, on the screen. As I said, there's four layers of detail. You can go right down to street level detail. It's got all the street names and everything else in there. In rural areas, it's got, um, sorry, not rural, in four wheel drive areas, you can get right down to fire trails and pretty much every track. I actually do a lot of four wheel driving myself and I'm yet to enter a track that isn't shown on these maps. So you can be confident that the detail that's provided in these maps is, is really quite special. We had a customer come to us 24 hours after we released this app on the 2nd of February and he said that he'd been out four wheel driving. He was part of our pre-release um, community who'd, who'd signed up for a, a pre-release. His navigation unit stopped working but thankfully he'd cached offline maps for the area he was in. He managed to navigate back to a main road using these maps instead of his navigator. Whilst that isn't the, the intended use case for this, it's a good backup for people who are in areas where there is no coverage and it's something that you can be confident in the detail of the level of maps that we're providing. So, you connect your radio to your phone, 
and your location is updated approximately every two minutes via the satellites and it's displayed by a small blue pin on the screen. When you transmit, it'll show you a red pin. So whether you receive or send a transmission, red pin is displayed on the map. You can turn that off if you don't want to see your own location, but it is quite useful for dropping a breadcrumb trail if you want to know where you've come from and how to get back there. It's user selectable how many pins are displayed, the age of the pins, how long they stay on the map for, and they change colour as they age. So they start off bright red and they go gradually through to grey. The main, I guess, uh, intention for us though is that the customer can decide what's showed on, shown on the screen at any time. We don't want to force customers to have heaps of information that's not relevant to them. So the point is, through the settings menu, the customers can select what they see and when and how long for. If you receive a transmission from another XRS user, it'll come up with a red pin, but it'll also come up with a small information box. That includes the user ID, which is user selectable. You can call yourself whatever you want. And it's also, as I said, very useful for determining who you're talking to at any one time. You've then got a small hashtag field there, which is the 32 character freeform text field I referred to earlier. We cannot use the term messaging. The communications authority gets very upset when you start sending text messages over voice because it blurs the line between a mobile phone and a UHF device. So this is a status, not a text message. However, with 32 characters, you have the ability to send a message. The beauty of this for many of our customers, particularly farmers in rural areas, if someone's in a tractor and gets out to check on a fence or turn on a pump, and someone transmits a really important piece of information they're away from the vehicle, as you know, they wouldn't hear it. If there's no verbal confirmation back from the user, you can then input that status field, hit the PTT button, and it will send that text field to the, customer, to the, uh, the user on the other end, and when they get back to the vehicle, they can see what it is. We've pre-canned a number of statuses into the app already, things like driving, stopped, heading home, but they're all user selectable, they can delete them, create whatever they like. So it's something again that gives another level of functionality to UHF that customers really haven't been able to do previously. Assuming that user then drives a little bit further along and transmits again, it'll display another pin, the text box will move with the, to the most recent transmission. <laughs> Hopefully everyone here is fairly familiar with UHF technology and particularly GME radios because you want to sell them more than any other brand. And something we've been promoting for quite some time now is cell call technology. So with location services, when you connect the app to the phone, uh, to the radio, sorry, if you have cell call set up, you press the button and it plays a cell call tone. The radio on the receiving end will send an acknowledgement tone that it's identified that cell call ID. The beauty of that is, with XRS Location Services, that response also includes GPS coordinates. So there's a safety element for it. Say you're on a farm, you put someone in a ute to go out and turn a pump on, and half an hour later they're not back. You can try calling them on the radio, and if they've fallen over and broken their leg and they can't get back to the vehicle, you're not going to have a clue where they are. With cell call turned on, you can ping the radio and you'll get that location data of the other radio. Again, this is a very fine line in terms of what's, available, what, what's allowable within the standard. UHF requires user intervention to press the PTT. With cell call, we can tread along the line of what's possible and allow that safety aspect to really become available to people who've traditionally had to go to a professional radio solution to, to give this kind of functionality. Just to digress slightly, the reason that GME has been able to develop this technology for UHF CB is actually through our P25 development. So P25 professional radio, we've spent a considerable amount of money on R&D and engineering over the last five years to develop P25 for government use. P25 Location Services has come along with that. I've been very lucky as the UHF product manager to be able to pluck that small piece of technology and plug it into the XRS radios via the Bluetooth. So it's something that we're quite confident that our UHF competitors are not going to be able to bring to market, not going to be able to match 
us anytime soon unless they spend, again, considerable development money to develop P25 technology. So for us, it's about differentiating from the rest of the market, making these things not just a standard UHF radio. And again, it's about appealing to those customers who maybe would be focused on price, but will now see the extra advantages of XRS hand over the extra money and also have confidence that they're going to continue to receive upgrades and new software for the 10 or 15 years that they're likely to own the radio. Last of all, as I said, points of interest. I've already covered that off. There are some preloaded points of interest in the app, but the main intention is that customers can use this for their own advantage to basically find things again out in the bush. Not having to rely on visual landmarks in the Australian bush is a really big benefit because a lot of it looks the same. All the gum trees look pretty similar, all the rocks look the same, so being able to drop POI and as I said in future share that with other users is a really, really good benefit for these people. So I've already alluded to this uh, previously, but um, we launched the app, as I said, on the, uh, the 2nd of February, so about a month ago, and we've had quite a bit of feedback from users saying, well, this is great and it sounds really cool, but why would I need it? As someone who uses a four-wheel drive, trying to find people in the bush is really difficult. So, what we're hoping is that the early adopters in every four-wheel drive club will buy into this technology, they'll see the benefits, and then they'll convince all of their mates to buy it because they want to be able to find each other in the bush. Four-wheel drive is the area that we see this getting the, the quickest uptake. They're not afraid of spending money. And a lot of it is about outdoing your mates. So who's got the best, flashiest four-wheel drive and the most accessories? And that's where we really see the, you know, the opportunity for XRS. And then the agriculture market. So at the start of the presentation, as I said, farmers were the ones who drove the uptake of UHF in this country to begin with back in the 80s. Anyone that tells you that a farmer is a backwards yokel chewing on a piece of straw doesn't know what they're talking about and they've never been to the country. Having been to all the major agriculture shows over the last 18 months in this country, the rural community are one of the fastest in terms of uptake of new technology out of any user group that we deal with in UHF. They are not afraid of technology. There is no such thing as a backwards farmer anymore. Any of the backwards farmers went out of business a long time ago. This is a highly commercialised industry now and if you're a primary producer in this country, it's really difficult to make a living. So any way that a farmer or a primary producer can make their business more efficient, safer, they're going to spend the money to do it. And we're already seeing that interest from the rural community around this technology. So it's something that I guess for you guys, when you're talking to customers about XRS, this is what you've got to be thinking about is what is the use case for the individual? It's not just about having the latest and greatest flashiest UHF, it's really what the benefit is for the customer. And it's something that we feel is really quite easy once you get into the conversation with a customer for them to suddenly go, oh, I get it, I understand why that would be of benefit to me. So once again, it's just about helping get people over the line where previously they might want a cheap $200 radio that oh, I can just talk to people. This is something different altogether. So, into a little bit of marketing. So, four-wheel drive and agriculture. It's going to be a repeated message from us. These are the two user groups that we're going to focus all of our marketing effort on. In terms of our advertising schedule, the next 12 to 24 months is all about location services. We're not talking about anything else except this because we believe that this is the next evolution of UHF. So, I noticed there's already some of our point of sale in your corner of your store there, which is very good. We're going to spend a large amount of money at four-wheel drive shows, agriculture shows, getting out there, getting in front of the people that we see taking this technology up the fastest. Now, something that we did a little differently with the launch of this technology. So, GME's been around a long time, as Mike said. Um, we're a very traditional company in a lot of aspects. We're still family owned. There's, uh, I guess, uh, somewhat of a reluctance in, in some cases of trying new things that are unfamiliar. One of those is social media. 
So I started at GME two and a half years ago and we didn't have a Facebook page, we didn't have a LinkedIn page, we didn't have any sort of social media presence whatsoever. And there was a bit of, uh, well, there were not a bit, there was a lot of discussion around whether or not that was the right way for a company like GME to go to market, particularly given, as I said at the start, that our user group is generally 45 plus. So we did a bit of an experiment with location services. We figured it was the right time, it was the right kind of technology to launch purely via social media. So we ran a teaser campaign. We started it on the 15th of December and we ran it through to the 2nd of February. What we asked our customers to do was give us their marketing data. Click the button, sign up, give us your details, tell us why you're interested in the technology. Keeping in mind we didn't actually tell them what it was, we just said something's coming. And it was highly successful. So, we launched the campaign on the 15th of December. In the first 48 hours, we had 485 customers click through and give us our marketing details. Now, that might not sound like a lot, but in terms of our social media presence, we have about 19,000 uh, followers on our Facebook page. So to get nearly 500 in the first 48 hours that bothered to click through and fill out a web form, told us straight away that there were people that were interested in this. We had over 2,000 registrations in the pre-launch uh, period, about 1,500 new followers, which is great. And what we did was on the 2nd of February, we emailed all of those customers and gave them pre-launch access to the app. So went up on the App Store on the 5th of February, but on the 2nd, we gave these 2,000 customers the opportunity to download it. 659 customers downloaded it in the first weekend. We also attended a four-wheel drive show that weekend and we had customers walking up to us saying, we've heard about your app, please tell us more. We've got a highly engaged user group with XRS Connect. There's been over 2,500 downloads in the first month since we released the app, which again might not sound like that much, but that's 15% of the total XRS units sold through to end users in the last year and a half. So again, we know that the customers that have bought into XRS are willing and are very interested in the technology that is coming through and they're interested in what it's going to offer to them. So again, it should give you guys confidence when you're talking to these customers that they do understand the technology. It's not daunting for them at all. And a couple of, I guess, well-scripted lines will very quickly show the benefit to the customer. And that's what we're talking about now. We're moving away from feature-driven marketing as we've, I guess, uh, become quite uh, familiar with talking technology and really talking about the benefit to the user. So that's the end of, uh, of my spiel, but I'm more than happy to answer any questions anyone has. If there's any uh, uncertainty or, or anything else anyone would like, I'm more than happy. Is the app app free? Or something? Free. free. So part of the proposition is that, as I said at the start, it's free upgrades, continual firmware upgrades. When we launched XRS, we made a commitment that we'd continue to develop it and continue to evolve it. GME's commitment is every 12 months, we will have a major software release and they will be free. That's not to say that there isn't potential for some subscriptions and some paid upgrades, but every 12 months you'll see something completely new on this platform that just keeps building and building. So we don't want people to pay a premium for a radio and then in 12 months time go, oh, it's been superseded, I've been dudded. So that's, that's really part of the core proposition of what XRS is and what, I guess, separates it from all the other UHF radios. Drop the location, you've got to press the push to talk button. Are you guys looking at having a, um, an alternative? Say, for example, it drops a location every 10 minutes automatically? Or like this is the challenge with the class license. So it still requires the user interaction to press the PTT button. What we are looking at is with the next release of location services in the next month or so is uh, breadcrumb trail. So similar to how the Navmans and other navigation devices for, the, for you, yourself, but for other users, there's no way we can actually automate that pin drop without upsetting the communications authority. <laughs> and I don't want to do that. <laughs> I can't wait. That's the next, really, I guess, the big leap for us. Um, we are developing it. Um, it's something that 
I can't give you exact timing or, or specs on, but it is in development at the moment. And that's where we'll be able to broaden, I guess, the market segments that we're appealing to. Six months ago, you guys asked me, what should we be developing? And I said a handheld XRS. We listened. That was, yeah, but you said, no, off, off the table. That's not going to happen. Who did? <laughs> me? No, Cookie. Don't worry about him. <laughs> He's a TV guy. <laughs> no, look, it's... um. We can see the opportunity with with handheld. Um, it's challenging, to say the least, to get OLED technology into a handheld, uh, particularly with Bluetooth in the same same device. But um, it's a core focus for for me as a product manager and for our engineers. If there's one thing I want to bring to market, it's an XRS handheld. You know when you uh, drop the pin. Uh, can you make it last like forever, like a minute? By clicking and holding and dropping a POI, you can. But the received um, pin will last for tw up to 24 hours, or if you obviously close the app, it'll it'll wipe it. So the way to uh, to do it is click the same red pin that you've just received and drop the POI there. Anything else? marine XRS? It's an interesting question. Um, it's a good question. There's been a, uh, a, a standards change in both Australia and New Zealand. Uh, the standard is going to be released this month and that is the mandate of DSC in all VHF radios. It's going to be a 12 month grandfather clause but at this point in time we expect that in March 2019 any VHF radio that doesn't have digital selective calling in it will not be available for sale in Australia. The funny part about that is they're not going to make the customers actually connect the DSC. It just has to be in there. So location services over UHF is very similar to digital selective calling. With the amount of development cost that's gone into XRS, we are looking at the moment to move that platform into a VHF band so that we can use this technology in marine. You can see the user benefit in marine quite quickly. It's just a, it's quite complex, put it that way. But the beauty of P25 is that it's UHF and VHF, so we know that it's technically possible. It's just a matter of how we bring that to, to the customers to make sure that it's usable. point in time, no. Um, we do have the very small 1224 reducer that we launched last year, the VC2S. Um, we've had really good uptake of that in particular um, areas of the market, but we do understand that it's not suitable for all applications. Um, I'm aware some of the other manufacturers have got 1224, particularly Icon being Japanese and everything runs 24 volt in Japan. I understand. Um, at this point in time, it's not something that we're, that we're hugely focused on. The vast majority of our market is running 12 volt, and that's where, you know, I, I, I guess I feel your pain, but it's not something that is uh, in large enough demand for us to justify at this point in time. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> you just have to find someone to mount that little box. It's only very small. Yeah, but all of these specialised machines, they want them all pretty on the inside. And you've got to be very careful what you actually mount and what you do. Understood. <laughs>